minutes. Ms. Clark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I thank you, Mr. Secretary, for joining us today. Uh, with your confirmation, I'm eager and elated to turn the page on the cruel, inhuman, inhumane, and morally bankrupt policies of the Trump administration. It's time we spend less money on border walls and more money on firewalls to protect our networks. Instead of fear mongering about immigrants, I'm looking forward to confronting the real threats of domestic terrorism as evidenced by the attack on the Capitol. Mr. Mr. Secretary, tomorrow the House will vote on the Dream and Promise Act, a bill I proudly co-lead that will provide a pathway to citizenship for DREAMers, TPS holders, and DED recipients. I'm also proud to be co-leading the U.S. Citizenship Act, President Biden's plan to reform our immigration system, to provide certainty, certainty to those already here and address the root causes of migration. As we work to pass this legislation, can you discuss what effort DHS is already undertaking to improve the lives of those who depend on DACA, TPS, and DED after four years of fear, uncertainty, and instability? Thank you very much, Congresswoman. Uh, we have um, restarted the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, uh, DACA, uh, it is, as it is commonly known. Uh, it is a program of which we are immensely proud. Uh, so many youth who actually uh, are frontline personnel in the fight uh, against the pandemic are DACA recipients and who will benefit tremendously from the legislation uh, that you uh, have proudly sponsored and for which I am uh, grateful. Uh, we have um, uh, the president um, has in fact used def uh, deferred and forced departure as the law provides and as presidents in the past of both parties um, have done. It's something uh, we too uh, are immensely uh, proud of. We can be, we can be, and we are both a nation of laws and a nation of immigrants. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. I want to turn to some of the devastating humanitarian crises we have seeing in both in Haiti, Yemen, nations like Cameroon and elsewhere around the world. For years, I fought for TPS designations for countries such as these. And I continue to believe these protections remain essential. Under your leadership, how will DHS determine whether countries qualify for redesignation? Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, uh, we in the Department of Homeland Security through U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services study the conditions uh, of countries uh, that have suffered uh, disasters, uh, that suffer um, uh, violence, uh, military strife, uh, and the like. We study those conditions to determine whether uh, temporary protected status is needed in the first instance or, or whether the country conditions militate in favor of the redesignation of a status previously provided. We do so in consultation with the Department of State that also studies uh, those country conditions. And that work is underway with respect to some of the countries that you have mentioned. Thank you again, Mr. Secretary. I currently chair the subcommittee on cybersecurity, and I appreciate the department's renewed emphasis on its cybersecurity mission. Following SolarWinds supply chain attack, many have suggested that hackers slip through our federal network security programs, including Einstein. But Einstein, a signature-based intrusion detection program, was never designed to detect or prevent a SolarWinds-style supply chain attack. That said, for years, experts have warned about the security limitations of Einstein, and recent breaches make clear that we must rethink our approach to federal network security, move away from legacy technologies whose security benefits have diminished, and put resources into tools that will defend against modern threats. How is the department planning to modernize its approach to the federal network security? Congresswoman, we are very focused on that. You are correct that Einstein is a perimeter um, a protective measure uh, that addresses known threats, and the solar winds exploitation uh, was not something that Einstein was designed for. Uh, similarly, we have continuous diagnostics and mitigation, which is a critical tool. We are looking intently at those tools 
and, and what other tools can complement them to address unknown vul vulnerabilities and zero day um, uh, uh, threats. Uh, we spoke about uh, this earlier this week within the Department of Homeland Security with our CISA leadership and our senior counselor for cybersecurity. We are well, grateful to this committee. Uh, we're grateful to this committee actually to fund uh, CISA with $650 million. And we now are resourced uh, to explore and implement new technologies uh, to supplement those we already have in place. Well, my time has expired. I look forward to further conversation with you within this space. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Gentlelady yields back. Chair recognizes gentlelady from Michigan. 